Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's been quite a while since I made the last video, but the important thing is I am back making videos for you guys and I'm very excited to bring a lot more to my channel this year than I did last year. I've got lots of exciting things lined up for the schedule and hopefully this time a much more reliable upload schedule. I've been doing very well over the new year. I've just been trying to breed stuff, trying to make new enclosures, record stuff. All the critters are doing very well. There'll be definitely plenty of updates, and I think the velvet worms at this point need another update video entirely on their own. All sorts of really, really cool and fun, exciting things have been happening with the collection that I'm very, very keen to discuss and share with you guys. And I really wanted to start this year off with a bang, so I'm deciding to make my biggest enclosure that I've ever personally made. I'm going to show you guys how I make it, and this is for uh, the trapdoor species Euopolis terrificus. But just one little thing I thought we'd have a look at first is I did get around to finally putting the second Cataxia babindaensis into the communal house. I did briefly record the videos for that, so we'll have a quick look at that and then we'll get straight into the build video. So here we have Cataxia babindaensis. This is the second female that I will be putting into the enclosure that I showed last update video. You know, immediately, probably the most visible feature that's different uh, to most Cataxia Australian keepers are aware of is the colour is very red. Uh, most Cataxia are jet black, uh, such as uh, Cataxia planii. Uh, but they're nonetheless still very large, as you can see, very spiny, as the common name spiny trapdoor uh, very well describes. These ones as well have got some interesting patterns on the abdomen. It's a little bit hard to pick up on my camera because I overexpose the footage a little bit, but they're kind of stripy with a lovely red coloration, making them a really, really cool cataxia that I'd recommend uh, in nearly any collection. But before we look at how to build an enclosure for these guys, I think it would be a little bit fun to learn about them themselves. So the Euopolis terrifica species group consists of four species found in Queensland, Australia. Euopolis crenatus, which is found around uh, Gympie National Park. Euopolis gomborian, which is found in, you guessed it, Gomborian National Park. Euopolis thynerum, and then Euopolis terrificus, and the latter two are found pretty much in the exact same areas further south around Mullaney and uh, Belthorpe. Now, I don't have any wild burrow photos of these spiders. They don't look uh, that remarkable on their own, but their burrows truly stand out on a global scale. If you compare nearly any other trapdoor spider burrow, not many can come close to being as unique as what the, these four species make. So I don't, have, as I mentioned, I don't have any wild burrow photos, but a trusty mate of mine on Facebook by the name of Super Dan, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, I'm sorry if not, but he has agreed to let me use some of his photos of wild burrows that he has found on his own and photographed. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Thank you very much, mate. And here we go. They really are quite unusual, uh, Euopolis terrificus burrows, in that they extend out from the ground. Now, as you can see, they have a very smooth outward texture. It's a perfectly capital D-shaped lid. So it's a little turret with a D-shaped lid. It almost looks like ancient pottery that's been buried in the ground. So they can be about two inches tall. Uh, at the sort of the maximum length and they will also decorate the top of this lid in moss which you're going to see we definitely give a fair bit of moss in the enclosure that we will be making so that's a little bit of information about them and now that you're a little bit familiar with them let's get into how to build an enclosure for one now the dimensions of the enclosure that I'll be building in today are 44 centimeters long by 28 centimeters wide and 30 centimeters high. For the materials I'll be using in this build I've got peat moss, some coastal white reptile sand, 
some dried out natural clay from a roadside embankment near me. You can use pretty much any type of clay as long as it uh, has been dried out thoroughly to kill off any microbes. I don't even worry about baking it in the oven. It's always worked out fine for me and I'm sure it'll work out just as fine for you. For hydrating the clay, I've just got some natural uh, rainwater. However, you can use filtered water if, from a fridge if that's easier to acquire. I'll also be using some just native and local materials like uh, sandstone and just some dried out pieces of wood from bushwalks in my area and an assortment of uh, local mosses that I have collected and been growing at home which work out really really well on the clay as you will well, as you've already no doubt seen in the velvet worm setup. I'm keeping the hardscape fairly simple, and this piece of wood, as well as this mossy bit of bark, are the two main components that I'll be using uh, to bring out the intended uh, scape for this build, as well as a few other little bits of wood that I'll add later on. This is the position that I'm hoping to have them in. I think it looks quite nice, and once I scape it and form all the clay around it, it'll really shape up nicely. The first thing I always do anytime I'm making a large clay enclosure is add a 50mm thick drainage layer made of sand and peat moss at the bottom. Now this is very important as it'll stop the water building up at the bottom of uh, the clay which will then make it go all gluggy where the spider will be spending the majority of its time. There is no specific ratio of peat to sand that you need for this, I've just decided to keep it fairly sandy this time. Once the sand has been added to the bottom of the enclosure, the next and most important part of the build process is mixing up the clay. So here I am moistening it with some filtered water in a spray bottle. I just go over the surface just to stop some of the dust from the dry clay underneath uh, getting airborne. Then as you can see I pour the other water on top of it. I don't pour too much in. I just pour enough that it'll soften it up and make it breakable by hand and as you'll also see if there's any tough parts that I can't mix up then I'll get the spray bottle and manually give it a quick moisten down to soften it up and then I will mix it all together until it's still fairly easy to break apart but can be compacted and hold its shape very well if you put a bit of pressure on it. Here I have tipped all that clay from that batch I was just mixing up into the setup. I've added a little bit more water to it to make it a bit more compact and I've placed the first piece of wood in there and used the more compact damp clay to shape around it so that I can fill in the rest of the clay around where the hardscape will be going. So this was a pretty self-explanatory process, I didn't record uh, that particular part, I pretty much just dumped the clay in and shaped it around. After that I've taken the piece of wood out and I'll continue to, to fill up the rest of the enclosure with clay, mixing it off camera and then dumping it in. I'm about a third of the way done so far, and to me, it's looking pretty good. At this point in the build, I had piled up enough clay at the back to support the front piece of wood, and decided it was time for me to start working on the placement for the mossy piece of bark. So once again, I added a little bit more water to the clay mixture so that it would hold its shape better, and I used this to try and stick around the mossy piece of bark to hold it in position, and work out where the final piece of wood at the front of the setup will go. I moved these around until I decided where I liked both of them and eventually I just came on a position for each one that I thought looked pretty nice. And then I can, took the moss out to stop the moss getting all dirty and covered in clay and continued to add clay behind the new piece of wood and stick it in place. Once that had been done, I continued to add more clay behind where the mossy bark was going and then added the mossy bark itself and continued to just keep on piling more clay around the back as I want a gradient with it being lower at the front and then taller at the back. I also started clearing a little bit of substrate away for the starter burrow uh, to go where the spider will hopefully be burrowing to begin with. 
Unfortunately, I lost a bit of the video footage for this part of the build, but all I did was just the exact same process at the start, which was pile up more clay around two more pieces of dried out gum tree wood to make them look a little bit like a fallen down log that has been partially buried by substrate. Now this will all get covered over by mosses over time as we are about to start planting them, but this is what the overall scape will look like. But now we can start decorating. So I'm using uh, sandstone rock chips just from a piece that I found in my local area and crushed up. Initially I was going for kind of a retaining wall style look with uh, a few different layers but I decided it looked a little bit too man-made and so I decided to make almost like a flowing stone river of sorts uh, going from the top left corner and flowing down toward the sandy area at the bottom. It wasn't specifically meant to look like a waterfall but I figure once the mosses start growing between the boulders it might make for a really cool look. At this point I also sprinkled in a little bit more white and black sand as well for decoration. Now we're entering the final stage of the build, which is planting all the mosses around. Now, unfortunately, I am very, very bad with my plants, so I don't know the species names of all these mosses. I will eventually <laughs> try and learn them all, and that way I can tell you exactly what I use and how I grow them. But I've chosen the location of each moss uh, with a fair bit of thought into how they will eventually grow out and spread throughout the setup. So at the bottom, uh, the bottom right we've got a moss that really likes to do well in sandy soil so I've kept that separate from the clay. All the rest will grow very very well in this clay. Some will grow up and quite tall, others will spread out to the side and cover most of the soil. And inevitably some ferns and random mosses will pop up on their own, which is always a very cool thing to see in about six months time when the setup becomes completely green. And I also added a random bit of spike moss, which will hopefully continue to thrive and look uh, nice and green for a long time to come. And there we have it, the largest trapdoor enclosure I have ever personally built and how I make it. So I'm not going to add the occupant of this enclosure immediately, I will not be building the rehousing in this video, I'm going to let all the plants establish for a few weeks first to see if I need to make uh, any adjustments. And then once she's got plenty of mosses to choose from that she can decorate her lid with, we'll add her in and I'll get a time lapse of her constructing the turret. So I hope you enjoyed the video, it was really fun to record. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy it and make sure you share it with your friends if you think they would enjoy it as well. The next video I'm hoping to make is going to be an in-depth look at the Barry Shelliday family or brush-footed trapdoors, uh, what uh, genus are in Australia and how to keep them, so look forward to that. We'll see you in the next video.